a time for a thousand delights. and boys right around Australia and welcome to the Magic Circle Club. Well, what excitement there was in the Magic Forest yesterday. You remember King Size, who is king of the Enchanted Land, has come down for a holiday to spend in the Magic Forest. And we had the most beautiful party last night, you could imagine. We were singing and dancing all around the cottage and eating cakes, which of course Fred Bear loved. As a matter of fact, he danced and sang so much that he couldn't even get to sleep somehow that he's firmed up very, very quickly with King Sides. <laughs> they may be good friends now, but not for long. Not when Fred Bear discovers that his newfound friend has been turned into a robot. <laughs> well, I suppose it's about time I gave King Size a call for afternoon tea. Oh! You called him last time. I'll call him this time. Oh, you wait. I will. I'll call I will him. call him now. Oh, I will call him. Okay. I will call him. It's okay. my turn. It's, it's my not, turn. It's my turn. It is my turn. Oh, you. You're nothing but an old copycat. Oh, don't you dare. Copycat, copycat. Follow me and you'll get fat. Whatever I go and whatever I do, I always seem to be copied by you. See that everyone's fed. Then when I make a cup of tea, I turn around and you're copying me. This cottage really is a fright, but I try to see that everything's right. And as I sit down with a cup of tea, I turn around and you're copying me. There you see just what I said. You haven't got a brain in your head. Count yourself as a queen, but honestly, you just shouldn't be seen. Now look at you, you're following me, and how I wish you'd stop copying me. Kind of you, Mother Hubbard. Oh, why don't you call me Matilda? Oh, and you can call me. <laughs> yes, that's right, Cassius. Uh, I, um, <coughs> excuse me, but I don't think I've been introduced to this young gentleman. Oh, he's no gentleman. I am so son. too. I'm the gentlest gentleman that there ever was. Oh, Cassius has to be the best at everything. There's so no has right. to about it. I am the best. I'm the best riddle teller in the world. Oh, you you, you tell riddles? Yes. Oh, goody. Well, look, uh, I haven't heard any riddles for years. Uh, can I ask you a riddle, Cassius? Well, well. Go on, size. I'll twist my it. wing. Uh, ask him well, one. Uh, my, one of my friends told me this riddle. Now, let me get it right. Oh, yes. What did the big firecracker say to the little firecracker? Oh, that's a good one. Uh, repeat the question. <laughs> repeat it? Oh, yes. What did the big firecracker say to the little firecracker? Uh, Come on, Cassius. Uh, oh, he doesn't know, he doesn't know, he doesn't know. Uh, doesn't know would you mind know. repeating the question? Oh, well, no, uh, Cassius, you uh, know Can it. I tell you the answer? If you insist. My pop's bigger than your pop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, of course, yes. Of course, I knew all the time. It was just that I didn't want to spoil it for you. Poor Mr. Noel Cassius, you did not. Now, I've got the best riddle of all. And it comes from Penny Miles, a free Alamein Street, Morwell. Good. Let's hear it. You better laugh. 
Oh, wow, I'll laugh. Wow, Thanks for the riddle, Penny. <laughs> Ned! I'm laughing already. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. What? Just looking at you. Well, do I Fixing meet you with my beady gaze. Do I meet with your approval? Mm. Uh, turn side on. No, I haven't a very good profile. <laughs> Give us a look at the back of your head. Why? It's nothing to do with a riddle. Now, come on. It is a bit of a riddle, right? <laughs> what is there? <laughs> Why did the farmer put barbed wire around his toes? Oh, 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 dear. I bet you don't know. <laughs> I have no idea at all. No. The farmer put barbed wire around his toes to keep the crows off his corn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I suppose that was written by John Bunyan, was it? <laughs> oh. 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 oh, now the address. That's the please. worst I've heard yet. <laughs> the address, please. <laughs> right to Cassius Cuckoo's Corn Corner. Next time, warn me. <laughs> Cassius Cuckoo's Corn Corner, care of the TV channel that you're now watching. Don't Cassius Cuckoo's Corn Corner. And you don't, don't be so right. callous. <laughs> bye bye. Who does she think she is? Pavlova? Instantaneous knowledge, the formulating network. I can be you, I can be you, I can be you. Hello, Nancy. <laughs> Hello, girls and boys throughout Australia. How are you all today? <laughs> you nearly missed your introduction, didn't you? Uh, yes, you. I was trying to attend to this bird today. It's not too good a mood, uh, Nancy. I can tell you to be careful. Oh, he'll be in a good mood with me, won't you, Leonardo? Don't pet me. Oh, well, in that case, I think you might miss out on your limerick. Today. Don't be like that. No. Well, as a matter of fact, I would like you to forego your limerick today because we haven't any time for your limerick. Beg me. I beg you. Ma get down on your knees. Oh, Nancy. I can't get down on my knees. That's yes, Mr. I can. The worst thing you can do. Beg to him. Don't encourage him. Oh, he's only playing a game. Well, I have a letter here from Robin Baker of 27 Munro Street, Baronia, Victoria. And Robin wants to know, are racehorses different from other horses? No, they're not. They've got four legs, tail, saddle, head, ears. Oh. They're not the same. Saddle, I mean, you were something in a moment. Where's a button? It's a horsey button. <laughs> I've already answered it. Quiet, I quiet, quiet bird. Yes, Robin. Racehorses are different from other horses. They are a special type or breed of horse called the English thoroughbred, and their ancestry can be traced back for 276 years. You're joking! I'm not you joking. You mean that every racehorse can trace his ancestry, his mum and dad's, back for more than 200 years? Leonardo, yes, I do. Good now, grief. Yes. Well, now, if a racehorse's breeding record has been properly kept, you can find out all about him in a huge book called The Stud Book. This book lists each horse's name and the names of his parents, his grandparents, his great-grandparents, and so on, all the way back through the years. Well, where did this very special breed of racehorses begin, Mr. Icahn? Well, Nancy, it began during the reign of King James I. He came to the English throne in 1603. He had heard of the beautiful horses of the Arabs, and so he sent his men to the east to buy some and bring them back to England. The horses of England were all heavy horses, descendants of the chargers the knights used to carry them into battle. And these horses had to be very big and strong to carry the weight of the armor worn by the knights. The horses brought back were like, well, nothing ever seen in England before. They were beautiful animals, slender bodied with long, graceful legs. They were much smaller than the English horses, but they had speed such as the king had never thought possible. It was from three of the greatest of these Arabian horses that all the thoroughbred race horses were to come. Now, how were these horses different from other horses? The difference lay in their size. They were smaller and in their long, slender, powerful legs. The horse, any horse, has only his legs and his teeth with which to defend himself. And the legs of the thoroughbred are built to carry him more swiftly than those of any other horse. Now this photograph of a heavy draft horse shows the difference very clearly. He is a very big and heavy and has legs. They're very short and very thick. He is obviously not built for speed but for strength. He is very slow but his great strength allows him to pull heavy loads. 
Now, the Shetland pony is different from a racehorse too. He is very, very small and doesn't have very much strength or speed. He is mainly ridden by children and usually becomes a great favorite with them. And so, although all horses have similar skeletons and are similar shapes, the racehorse is much thinner and has long, graceful legs. These long legs with their powerful muscles carry him swiftly along and make him one of the most beautiful as well as one of the fastest of all animals. Where do you think you are, Flemington? I'm just watching. Quiet. Come on, the addresses, please. Okay, ma'am. Uh, write to Leonardo I can and Leonardo's Limerick at the same address. And that's the one you see on the TV screen right now. I can and Leonardo's Limerick. Hey, ma'am. Yes? Are you running in the Melbourne Cup? Sebastian's getting on. Oh, yes. yes, I wonder where he is. Well, yesterday he asked size if he could be Max's jester for a while. Oh, 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 oh I hope he doesn't fall down the stairs like the other one. <laughs> oh, 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 this has been the most wonderful party I've ever had, Trent. What is it, Trent, there? What, you want to play games again? Oh, no, uh, no, no, Fred. Size is much too tired to play games. Tired? Oh, tired? Nonsense. Come on, Fred Bear. Let's play, um, Chasey. You're he! <laughs> Now's my chance that two of them are alone. I'll just creep up behind them. Bother! Somebody's coming! Well, just two fellows I'd hoped to meet. Two gentlemen, two enterprising gentlemen who could not fail to seize an opportunity of a lifetime. No, 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 not yet. Yes, gentlemen, the opportunity of a lifetime for a holiday. Now, boys. Not yet, not yet. Yes, gentlemen, the holiday of a lifetime. Easy rentals, gay nights, filled days of carefree enjoyment at Sir Jasper's South Sea Shanty. Sir Jasper's South Sea Shanty. <laughs> Sir Jasper's South Sea Shanty! Now, boys. Yes, you fool. <laughs> golden sand there before you palms in their hand stand dusky golden maidens in dresses of brightest hue and for you yes for you this is the call of the sea Splash, don't you hear it calling? Splish, splash, as the summer night is falling. There above you, shimmering so white and bright, there above you, the moon sheds its light. Night, nowhere has that feeling, romance ever so grand. Throughout the land, yes, the land, you'll hear the call of the sea. Splash, don't you hear it calling? Splish, splash. 
As the summer night is falling, there before you stretches the golden sand. There before you, palms in their hand, stand the dusky golden maidens in dresses of brightest. Nice, I'm sure. Nice, nice, of course it's nice. Yes, this is the holiday you've dreamed of. Don't you feel like living? Don't you feel like you want to get away from it all? Live in the sun, have fun. Um, well, yes, sir, but I'm having quite enough fun here. Uh, listen, to... I hear the South Sea's calling us. Gaspar. <laughs> it's calling us now. Gaspar! <laughs> Are we going to the hooky oh, world? Come along. To Let us go along hooky and inspect hooky this lovely world. holiday resort. Are we going to the hooky world? Father, that Fred Berry must have seen me. I should have turned him into a toad before he had a chance to tell the others. Still, the king doesn't know I'm here. I might just follow them along that South Sea shanty. And see if I'll get the chance to work my wicked spell there. What's the Jasper? Oh, oh it's taking the king to his hideout. Oh, oh and what, what else? The wicked fairy oh. was was watching them oh. and has followed them. Oh, 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 oh not the wicked fairy! Oh, oh, now, Mother oh, Hubbard, oh, come, Mother oh, Hubbard, come oh, here. Oh. Now be brave. I know oh. nobody likes the wicked fairy, but well, we've got to try to rescue the king. Oh, perhaps Sir Jasper has taken him to the hideout so he can make himself king of the magic forest. Oh no, I hope not. Oh, oh. no, I don't think King Size would allow that. But what's got me worried is. Why the wicked fairy would be following the king? Perhaps she wants to punish the king. Or maybe she wants to get forgiveness for all the wicked deeds she's done. Oh, and maybe she wants to... Cast a spell. A wicked spell oh. to repay him for banishing her from his kingdom. Oh, come on, we've got to get to Sir Jasper's hideout. Oh, no, not me. I'm not going. No, 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 no. You're going to get me to the hideout now. Mother Hubbard, it's... No, Fifi, no. it's much better if we all stick together. Oh, no, no, no. no. Oh, come all right then. Come on, Fifi. Oh, oh come on. Fifi, come on now. Come on now. Come on, Nancy, look out. Come on. Ah, here we are, Sir Jasper South Sea Shanty. Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> well, uh, I didn't see the sea. I didn't see the sea the whole time we were coming through the forest. What? Can't you hear it? Hear what? The sound of the surf. It's right over there. Can't you hear it? No? Gaspar! Yes, well, oh, oh, oh. Ah, hear it now. That sounds like someone sloshing about in a bucket of water to me. Uh, nonsense, nonsense, nonsense. Now, a little later, we'll go out for a little swim, but first, we must sample one of those marvelous South Sea Island feasts. Gaspar! Yes, boss? The feast, you idiot. The what, boss? Bring the feast! Oh, yeah, boss, the feast. Yes, a feast fit for a king. <laughs> Even if I do say so myself. Here it yes. is, boss. Oh, the marvelous feast. But now, let us, let us begin. But, but, but this, this is only a pineapple. Yes, I know. We had rather a poor year for tourists this year. Uh, well, well, look, I really think I should be going back to my friends now. Uh, but you can't go yet. Why not? Uh, you haven't eaten the feast yet. Well, I'll see that you're paid for the pineapple. Now, would you please just stand aside yeah, and then... But you can't leave yet! Why can't I? Don't you know who I am? Yes, you're the king of enchantment land. That's right. Now, yes. you've got to let me go. Uh, don't you remember, sire, uh, the rule number 87 of the kingly charter? Not 
Rule 87. Yes, Rule 87. And it clearly states that anyone offering lodgings to His Majesty whilst he's in a strange land, His Majesty must accept. And we're offering you a lodgings right here, aren't we, Gasper? That's right, boys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, you can see, you oh, can no. see. Sorry, you, you gave me a fright. Yes, I was still getting over my walk. Oh, you're shaking. Did I give you a fright too? Oh, I'm sorry. I love you too much to frighten you on purpose. You don't think I would, do you? No. Give us a kiss. Oh, oh that was lovely. Just as well you're not an Eskimo. You know what an Eskimo is, do you? They rub noses, don't they? <laughs> would you tickle a bit? <laughs> yes. Well... We'll settle back in our mushroom spot because this is magic, very magic. Nothing can harm us here. No. Well, let's have a look at some drawings. We have a lovely letter from Bendigo, and I'd like to thank Mrs. Joyce Shears very much for writing on behalf of your little four-year-old. You're wondering if we'd show pictures of a four-year-old because, well, they're not perhaps as good at drawing as they'd like to be. We certainly would like to show Carol's drawings because I think she's done a marvellous job. Carol Shears of Bendigo. Look, there's Leonardo and I can. Can you see that, Fred? Yes, and under here, she remembers the underwater adventure we had. And there's the octopus. And there are a few other drawings there. Thank you very much, Carol. Here are some very good drawings I received in the mail from Carmel. Now, Carmel lives at 52 Stanhope Street, Eltham, and she has sent in Montmorency Rabbit, which is very good, isn't it? She's got the cheeks out there and all. And your little friend Bertie. Hello, man. Hello, man. <laughs> and there's the Sultan of Zog. Oh, oh, Mother Hubbard. Oh, dear. Always in a tears in her cupboard. And there's Curly Dimples. Well, that's very, very good. Thank you very much, Carmel. I'm afraid I don't know your surname. But you'll know, won't you? We hope. What have we got here, Fred? Oh, look, Montmorency Rabbit is a very good subject for the drawing, isn't he? And there's Max, too. They're very good drawings. And thank you very much, Lana and Jane Elston of Power Avenue, Chadston. Well, you a bit more relaxed? 
Come on. We really should knock that naughty clock. Who says it's time to go? It goes so fast, our time has passed, and we must end our show. So be good girls and boys all day, whether at home or school or play. And we'll be back tomorrow, you know just where and when. to us. Really, we're a bundle of nerves here in the magic forest. You should see Mother Hubbard and Fifi. I believe, too, there's a wicked fairy somewhere hovering around. Will you let me know if it's true? Because I'd like to be able to do something about it if I can. Meanwhile, have a happy night tonight. We'll see you tomorrow.